For some reason, some people think that Einstein replaced Newton when it comes to describing gravity. This is just as silly as if two people were describing the same car they see, just one from the front, and the other from the rear. Although, to a lay person, it may sound like they are each describing something far different from the other, if a person is knowledgeable enough about cars, they can easily determine what is being described. What is next? Does 1 not equal 1? Does 2 times 2 not equal 2 plus 2? Does 2 plus 3 not equal 7 to 2? If these questions sound silly, then it seems we are on the right track. Newtonian gravity A. K. A. The law of gravity This equation describing the gravitational influence of two bodies is rather well known, so I will not bog this down with an in-depth analysis. That is simply not needed. On that note however, a quick review of the variables might be needed, if for no other reason than to ensure we are all talking about this in the same manner. F is the force of gravity, as Newton describes the observable force like aspects gravity impacts our reality with. G is the gravitational constant. M1 and M2 are the mass of two objects respectfully. And R is the distance between the center of both objects. And before anyone tries to complain there is not a three-body equation for gravity, above is what video games use to simulate the gravity interactions. For multiple objects, all that is needed is this equation for each pair of objects to get each vector, and then the vectors need to be combined. Combining vectors is quite common and necessary for accurate simulations. This topic can be explored further. Let us rearrange Newton's formula so we are solving for the gravitational constant. Why this is being done will become much clearer later. Before anyone complains, this is the same as taking 3 plus 5 equals 8 and turning that into 8 minus 3 equals 5. Einstein field equations This will be a brief explanation of each term. Each term is what is known as a tensor, an algebraic object that describes a multilinear relationship between sets of algebraic objects related to a vector space. I will try to describe further terms in as least complicated as possible. This is mostly due to an in-depth description not being needed. A surface knowledge of this is all that is required right now to understand my point. Most of these descriptions slash definitions will be from the Wikipedia as to not go too deep. For an actual understanding of this subject, further personal research is recommended. The expression on the left represents the curvature of spacetime as determined by the metric. The expression on the right represents the stress energy momentum content of spacetime. The Einstein field equations can then be interpreted as a set of equations dictating how stress energy momentum determines the curvature of spacetime. These equations, together with the geodesic equation, which dictates how freely falling matter moves through spacetime, form the core of the mathematical formulation of general relativity. This formula is composed of the Einstein tensor, the metric tensor, the stress energy tensor, the cosmological constant and the Einstein gravitational constant. Just like earlier, the formula will be rearranged. This formula is solving for the Einstein gravitational constant. Following this is a brief, surface description of each variable. This is not intended as a full or even 100% accurate as exact details will be omitted to reduce complexity as only a cursory knowledge of this subject matter is needed for this scope. Metric tensor In general relativity, the metric tensor, in this context often abbreviated to simply the metric, is the fundamental object of study. It may loosely be thought of as a generalization of the gravitational potential of Newtonian gravitation. The metric captures all the geometric and causal structure of spacetime, being used to define notions such as time, distance, volume, curvature, angle, and separation of the future and the past. 
Einstein tensor. On the right is the formula of the Einstein tensor. Our mu nu is the Ricci curvature tensor, and R is the scalar curvature. Einstein's cosmological constant. This variable contains a very rich history that is much too long for this scope. Not much is needed for this variable in this scope other than it is a component of Einstein's field equations. Stress energy tensor. The stress energy tensor, sometimes called the stress energy momentum tensor or the energy momentum tensor, is a tensor physical quantity that describes the density and flux of energy and momentum in space time, generalizing the stress tensor of Newtonian physics. It is an attribute of matter, radiation, and non gravitational force fields. This density and flux of energy and momentum are the sources of the gravitational field in the Einstein field equations of general relativity, just as mass density is the source of such a field in Newtonian gravity. Einstein gravitational constant here we have the Einstein gravitational constant term defined as its own equation. The Einstein gravitational constant is equal to a times pi times the Newtonian gravitational constant over the speed of light to the fourth power. Now we can substitute the Einstein gravitational constant for its formula. After substituting the Einstein gravitational formula for its constant, this equation can be rearranged again for the gravitational constant also known as big G. Side by side, we can see that both Einstein and Newton can determine the gravitational constant. And I am sure we can all agree that since both variables are the same subject, they can and should be equal, correct? G equals G, right? Right. It is the same concept as 1 equals 1. Since g equals g, both formulas can be substituted and then combined for a slightly larger equation, as each side would equal g. Thus, since g equals g, then Einstein equals Newton. Both describe the same thing, but with different terms. And now, it has been proven. One cannot supersede another if they are both equal. 